And I think about my father and the things that my father has put aside that made him smile, that made him happy, and the things that are in his life that make him miserable and where he has put his attention, where he has put his focus. It's a wonderful example of everything that I don't want to be, I don't want to do. But it is Father's Day, yes? <sighs> Take a deep breath. Don't forget the little things that make you happy as I meddle today. As I poke and, and push a little bit. Are we okay if the minister pokes and pushes just a little bit today? I'm going to do it through full disclosure. I'm going to put my guts on the table. I'm going to invite you to put your guts on the table and know that we share a human experience. And in that human experience, there are similarities. Things that you will like, things that you will not like. Things that you will agree with, things that you will not agree with. Have you noticed that about Unity North? There are so many ways to do a message on a Sunday morning. And this week I was just reflecting upon those. And Father's Day can be a tricky time for us. There's lots of different ways. Which one is right? Which one is wrong? And everybody has an opinion about the way you're supposed to do it. Have you noticed that? This is the way a sermon should be done or it should not be done. Well, I'm going to give you some of those. Some are five easy steps to enlightenment. Most people like that. Five easy steps to become evolved. Or three easy steps to transform your life. Yes, that's one way. It's a bit of a dry, linear way to contextualize your spiritual path. But it's one that I sometimes use. Then there's the way of using quotes and using scriptures to prove a point. And dissecting those quotes and those scriptures to see how they might have relevance today. I use that sometimes. And people have opinions about it. And then there's a the method that Jesus used. Perhaps a whole different group of people that prefer Jesus' method. And one that teaches a whole different crowd is story. Let me tell a story. Let me tell a parable to illustrate a point a little bit less direct. Sometimes it's an end run with the message that we have, but it's one that I often use, and it's one that people have an opinion about. Yet there is another that I can stand up here and I can thump this a little bit, and I can get a little bit zealous, and I can get a little bit passion, and challenge ourselves, challenge ourselves on some kind of a moral idea that needs to be addressed, something that's up in our world and in our collective consciousness that needs to be addressed, and it looks a little bit more like a real sermon like down the street. Oh, and boy, there are opinions about that. Lots of opinions about that don't meddle in my life, but I sometimes give those, those kinds of talks. And then there are the fifth style, the one I'm choosing to do today. And that is to simply have a family chat. Let's just be together as family, okay? Put our guts on the table and have a family chat. There is going to be quotes. There may be a little bit of passionate um, pushing. And there is also going to be five steps to enlightenment, or at least five steps to healing your relationship with your dad or anybody else on the planet. And there will be stories about my father that may include a passionate challenge. But I really just want this to be a family meeting. Take a breath with me. Have a family meeting. I'm asking you, each of you, to suspend which way is the way the minister is supposed to do a message on Sunday morning. To suspend that opinion. To suspend that judgment. Are we good with that? Sometimes life calls us to do that. Have you noticed that? Sometimes life calls us to suspend our judgment and our opinions. And guess what? Sometimes ministers do exactly the same thing. They call you to put the judgment aside, put the opinion aside, and just be present. And certainly the spiritual path, if we are on an evolving path of becoming, that path is going to require us to set our judgments aside, old information, to come to the precipice of new information, and be open, willing, available, vulnerable, and present. Take a breath with me. Can you be present today? To no matter what happens, to no matter what is said, to no matter who sits next to you, to no matter what happens in this room today, to simply be present as a witness to life happening. Are we good with that? That one's the easy one. Now the second request I have of you today. I'm going to ask you to suspend any opinion or judgment that you have about the relationship you have with your father. Good, bad, or otherwise. Just let it be. Let, set it to the corner for a moment. It'll be there when you want it when we leave. Whatever it might be, it'll be waiting for you. But to suspend that. Father's Day is one of the most difficult days. It's right up there with Mother's Day. What's the common denominator of fatherhood, of our relationship with our father? Imperfection. 
Say that with me. The common denominator of fatherhood is imperfection. It's ripe with experiences of imperfection. But there's varying degrees of that imperfection. Have you noticed that? My father's flaw is not your father's flaw. My father's flaw is not the flaw that I have as a father. But you can dig deep enough. If you were looking, that which you were focusing on is going to absolutely expose some imperfection. Because we're human beings all trying to figure this life out. And nobody gave me a manual when I became a father. Nobody gave my dad a manual when he became a father. So whatever the pain or the discomfort or joy or good that you have with that relationship that might come from those flaws, I'm asking you to step back. Take a step back, take a breath, breathe, and set down the baggage. Set down the baggage you might have about dad and just be present. Sometimes life asks us to do that. Have you noticed that? Present. Sometimes minister. Ministers will ask you to be present. And sometimes the spiritual path, most times, will ask you to be present. So if we are here to grow, be present. If you're here not to grow and you want to hold on to a story and you want to hold on to a pain, you're probably in the wrong church. And that's okay. No judgment about that, but it may not be the place that you're going to be the most comfortable on Father's Day here at Unity North. On this day, there's going to be a handful of people in the room who just can't do what I'm asking you to do. And that's okay. I want you to know that you are loved and you are respected, and I honor that. Father's Day is usually the day where there's a hundred yeah buts that come up to the platform after we're all done. Yeah, well, that applies. That was a good message, but it doesn't apply to me because you don't know the depth of my pain. You don't know the depth of my wound or my hurt, and the reality is I don't. I do not know the depth of your experience with your dad, your mother, your brother, your Uncle Joe, or somebody who hurt you. So if, you, if your dad was perfect, and I know that Averill always says that her parents were perfect, so Chris, you were perfect. We all know that. Put somebody else's face on this idea those that feel like I just don't know how painful your story is, I don't. And I want you to know, I do not know. So my challenge is for those who maybe, maybe are willing to have a different life, a better life. I fully acknowledge that. But what I do know, what I do know and I will not waver from, are the five steps to enlightenment. The five steps to healing anything in your life. These are compassion, empathy, understanding, love, and forgiveness. Let me say them again. Compassion, empathy, understanding, love, and forgiveness. And what I do know is those five steps will create healing a heck of a lot faster than judgment and a heck of a lot faster than opinion. Anybody notice that? There's your five steps. The Dalai Lama had this to say about these. Let's put the quote up there. Together we read, love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. Let that digest for a second. Without love and compassion, we as a human race are dying. Let's be the conduit for love and compassion no matter how difficult it is, no matter how painful it might be. And then there's a C.S. Lewis quote that I found that I love that really gets in your face and meddles a little bit. He said this, everyone thinks forgiveness is a lovely idea until they have something to forgive. You ever notice that? Yes, forgive, forget, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. You should forgive, you should forgive. Yeah, but I'm not going to forgive my father because that wound goes too deep. I'm not going to forgive my brother or my child because that wound goes too deep. Forgiveness is not just a pretty idea. It's not a decoration on a spiritual path. It is a way of finding God. It is a way of bringing God to the planet, and sometimes it is hard work. Have you noticed that? And it is difficult. I, like many of you, have had a very complicated relationship with my father. One of unmet expectations on both sides of that equation. Anybody relate? Not the guy that dragged his dad to church. <laughs> the reality is, it's ripe with that. Disappointments are part of our human journey. You learn that? disappointments are going to be part of the evolutionary process. It's a step to becoming who we are meant to be. We're all trying to find our way to ourselves. Wouldn't you say that's what the spiritual path is about? Finding our way to ourselves, guess what? Your dad's doing it too. And your mother, and your brother, and your children. 
dads are on the same journey that you're on, maybe at a different level. We're all on this great ladder of evolution, and each one of us is on a level. Perhaps some compassion, love, understanding, and forgiveness can bring us a little bit closer to a higher reality instead of judging those that are on a lower rung, instead of condemning those that are on a lower rung that just don't know, that have forgotten. If we look with the eyes of judgment and the eyes of pain and frustration, nothing will ever change. If we look with the eyes of judgment and pain and disappointment and frustration, nothing on this planet will ever change. So you get to decide on Father's Day what kind of eyes you're using. And for many years, nothing ever changed in my relationship with my dad because those are the eyes I had. Disappointment, frustration, anger, hurt. Every year at Father's Day, I would reflect yet again on how my father never, ever let me know that he was proud of me. Never once said the words, I love you. They did not cross his lips, and I was hungry for it. Never once did we really have any conversation about what it is I do, about how I'm finding my way on earth. It's part, dads sometimes have a tough time. Nobody gave him a manual of how you tell your son that you're proud of him or that you love him or what he's doing is making a difference. There's my guts I told you I was going to put onto the table. And for many years, Father's Day was just a painful reminder of not getting my needs met. Oh, my father could passionately brag about people. He had two brothers. He would talk at depth about his collegiate professor brothers who could be flown clear across the country to lecture and to speak on somebody else's dime. He was, they were amazing. And then there was my daughter, my beautiful, amazing, intelligent daughter who never heard a compliment from my father until she was engaged to be married to a doctor. And my father fell over himself, drooled over himself, really made a fool of himself, fawning over the doctor. Yet my beautiful daughter stood there saying, who am I? What am I? Chopped liver. And I found judgment about that. Not the least of which is the man that she was going to be married. God, thank you as a father. That did not happen. He was the biggest narcissist on the planet. <laughs> but my father loved him. My father thought he was so great, and I never understood. When it came to his kids that are pretty much country, country bumpkins. I'm a country bumpkin. I grew up on a farm, and I'm not complex. Nobody's going to fly me to Germany to speak or lecture. There was, no, there was no praise, there was, it was in short supply. And it didn't get too personal until it started showing up in my daughter's life. It was the most precious gift I have on earth. And it's like, what about Angel? Look at this beautiful gift, say something, Dad. And then one day came, one day came, and I decided I'd had enough of my wallowing. I'd had enough of my victimhood. I'd had enough of giving all my power away to whether my father praised me or didn't praise me. And I had enough of seeing him as the villain. You know, any story that you're telling that has to have a villain, a victim, or a hero is a story that needs to die. It's a story that needs to be put aside. And so I began to have different eyes, okay? If anything's going to change here, I need to have different eyes, the eyes of love, compassion, empathy, understanding, and forgiveness. Marcel Proust once said this. Let's put it up there and read it together. The real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. I needed to have different eyes on Father's Day. I needed them on Mother's Day, too. And I needed them... 365 days a year, I needed to develop new eyes. Don't forget the happy little things in your life while you're complaining about being a victim. That's the father you are being. I'm fathering a reality of victimhood. I'm fathering a, valley, a, a, a fatherhood of a, a life of pain and of misery and of suffering. Woe is me. I was the father of that kind of reality, and every Father's Day it got worse. I needed to escape the endless cycle of unmet needs and find a different way and for God's sake start meeting my own needs. 
one that would free me from the endless cycle of suffering because of my father's limitation. Breathe that in. Fathers are limited. Dads don't know how to do the job and they're figuring it out and nobody gave them a manual. That's something I'm asking you to do today, good, bad, or otherwise, and if you want to put somebody else's face on it, go ahead. If it's not your dad, if it's too painful, find somebody that you can bring into the room and apply what I'm about to say to them. I'm asking you, not only with your fathers, but with anyone in your life that does not show up the way you think they should, to put down the glasses that you've been wearing and put on different paths, different glasses. The spiritual path demands it. Ministers demand it because we're here to grow. We're not here to be stagnant. Life will ask you if you ever want to become the person you are meant to be and live the heaven on earth that you are meant to live is to change the glasses, to set down judgment and opinion, the endless line of judgments and opinions and pick up your five steps to enlightenment. They are compassion, understanding, empathy, love, and forgiveness. That's not easy. I get it. I get it. It is absolutely not easy. And it may be more challenging for some of you whose fathers really, really, really screwed up. And that wound is deep. And they did some damage. Yet the spiritual principle, which is absolute in its nature, remains the same. Breathe that in. The spiritual principle remains the same. Love is the medicine no matter how deep the wound goes. And you're going to come to the edge. Oh, but you don't understand my pain. You don't understand his actions. Yes, I, maybe I don't understand it, but I understand what it means to hurt. And I understand what it means to not be acknowledged and to be carrying those wounds. And you're going to come to the edge. The medicine is the same. Let's say it together. Love is the medicine no matter how deep the wound. If there is an edge to the power of love, what are you doing here? If there is an edge because it's just too painful, love is weaker than your pain. And you've given your power away, as I said last week. I talked about it's all medicine. Everything you've experienced is there to heal you if you use it as medicine. If you are opening your heart and your mind and opening your eyes to a different set of lenses, there can be healing here. Love is the medicine. Now, what was the disease? Oh, you don't understand. You don't get it. I understand the principle. Love is the medicine. What was your disease again? Disease. Where is the discomfort? What's the pain? Love is the medicine. You know, the, the Baptist church down the street has their theme, their theme that they go to, that it's, it's, it's the answer to all things. Well, if there's a unity theme, that's it right there. Love more fully. Love more readily. Love more passionately. Love more everything, because love is the medicine no matter how deep your wound is. So in an effort to understand my father, I asked him this question. How do you measure success, Dad? How do you measure success, Dad? And I probably had an attitude behind it. I don't disguise my attitude very well sometimes. Just ask the board of directors and the staff, they'll tell you. I would love to tell you that a profound, beautiful, intimate dialogue of vulnerable sharing immediately ensued. It did not. But it opened a small portal, a small window for healing. By changing judgment into compassion and love, a small little window opened up. A portal to see my father in a way I had never seen my father I was fathering a new relationship when he didn't know how to do it. And a space for him to see me like he had never seen me before. A song was in my mind when this conversation happened. I wrote it. This is about a year ago. I took on the role of parent as I let these words vibrate in me. I'm going to ask you to put those words up there. I'm going to sing it first. But I'm going to invite you to bring your father or that person whose face is on that father role no matter how painful it is, and place your hand on your heart. And I had to sing this over and over and over again because I was using the lens of compassion, love, forgiveness, and understanding. Child of my heart, 
I see you, I hear you, I feel you. Child of my heart, let me know your needs. Let your soul receive. I am here, I am here for you now. How many of us as wounded children have ever been able to hold your father in that kind of energy? To reverse the roles, hand on your heart, sing it with me. Child of my heart, I see you, I hear you, I feel you. Child of my heart, let me know your needs, let your soul receive. I am here, I am here for you now. And in that moment, I not only sang that song for my father, but I realized that I could be the father of a different reality. And that I could give myself that which I was hungry for, the hungry ghost, desperate for something. I held myself in that song. Hold yourself right there and sing this with me again. Child of my heart, I see you, I hear you, I feel you. Child of my heart, let me know your needs. Let your soul receive. I am here. I am here for you now. What, what if I spent as much time forgiving my father for his failures instead of judging him? But put anybody's face on that. What if I spent more time forgiving the people in my life that haven't shown up right instead of judging them? A different reality can emerge. A different experience will emerge. What if I could see my dad for who he really was underneath my pain, underneath my wound, underneath all of his fumbling and his mistakes and his trying desperately to do fatherhood correctly? Or for some of you, in some cases, a dad who didn't even try at all. That exists in the room, by the way. They, dad didn't even make an effort. It's the same medicine, no matter how deep the wound. Love more fully. Can we consider that no matter how deep or shallow your wound, that we're all just walking our way home out of the dark, and your dad, and my dad, and every dad on the planet is doing the same thing thing, trying to walk out of a hole. So back to my question, how do you measure success, Dad? Maybe a little bit more compassionate now. Maybe the edge was gone. Maybe there was a true desire to understand. Over the next three visits, and it helped that my mother was very close to losing her life at the time, so maybe there was more vulnerability in the Burdick household than there usually is. That question got asked again and again and again. You see, sometimes we ask questions of the relationships in our life. We ask once and say, ah, didn't work, see? He's just going to be a jerk. He can't go there. Ours is to be diligent. The spiritual path calls us, calls us to be persistent, to be regular and to not give up. Love is a constant state of being, not an act. Loving words is cheap. A loving presence, every time you're in the presence, is what is called for here. Each time it went to a more authentic place till I got the bottom, got to the bottom of my father's pain. And I got to the answer that brought me a degree of comfort. It didn't erase any of our history. None of it, none of it was erased. But it brought peace. And isn't that what we're seeking? Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. No, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with my father. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with my mother or my brother or my sister. No, let it begin together with me. And what I got at the bottom of that piece was this phrase. I think my brother Lester speaks it all the time. We can't give what we don't have. These people that have been judged for years in your life cannot give you what they don't have have. And stories began to emerge in the Burdick household that were vulnerable. That doesn't happen. 
Stories I'd never heard before by allowing compassion, understanding, empathy, love, and forgiveness to lead. And when I did, the narrative changed. The opinions changed. The perspectives changed. The story changed. The relationship changed. And the entire environment began to shift because one person had enough guts to be the father of a new reality and to quit putting that responsibility on a parent or a brother or a sister. My father had been held up his entire life in comparison to his wonderful collegiate doctorate brothers. He was not a college professor. My dad was not a doctor. He was not a lawyer. He drove a truck and he served restaurants. And he was told by the father, by the way, that I bragged on last week, my grandpa Burdick who put himself through college, Harvard Business School, got a degree at Stanford, working five jobs. That beautiful man also told my father he was a failure. Oh, I'd never heard that before. See, compassion opens up stories that were always there, but we didn't know they were there. Judgment doesn't allow those stories in. And my grandmother told my father the same thing. And she said at one point, and my grandmother on my dad's side is the one that taught me to play piano. I'm forever grateful for her, her giving me that gift and the beautiful person she was. She also said in the household, and I had forgotten this until I was willing to be more compassionate. Bill could have made something of himself if he hadn't married Nelda. When I'm looking at my own wound, when I'm looking at my own pain, I shut off any ability to see somebody else's pain, to see anybody else's wound. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. There's some power in that. Seek first to love, then be loved. Seek first to be empathetic and forgiving and kind before you, before you expect it from somebody else. His measurements of success were very, very warped. And I saw him just the way my father had seen himself as a failure. His measurement of success was a standard that nobody Nobody could live up to, let alone his kids. Not one of his four kids or even his grandkids until one of his grandkids decided to go to medical school. And suddenly, they were the apple of his eye. Out of compassion for my father and myself as the father of my own reality, I gave my dad a new form of measurement. And I got really vulnerable, and I started telling my father everything I appreciated about him. It wasn't manufactured, it was sincere, but I had to look deep because I still had layers of judgment. I still had layers of, of pain that had to be worked through, but we worked through them together, and I began to lay out things for him he had done that had forever changed my life in positive ways. And the lives of his kids, my father is an amazing grandfather. Somehow he found the manual on how to be a grandfather because he gives... Grandkids, including my daughter to this day, who when I threw a fit about it, told her how proud he was of her. I gave him a different tool of measurement, and the lives of his kids and his grandkids began to become something, a legacy that far surpassed any piece of paper on a wall or any plane ticket to Germany to lecture or any write-up in a medical journal. Oh, my father tried to offer his evidence from his pain and his wound, that he was a nobody, he was a nothing, and I did not let him do it. I was committed to giving my flawed father and me as his flawed son a new way of measuring life and thus give myself the same kind of tool. Bill Ballard, it was on the marquee when you came in, says this, together, the highest form of knowledge is empathy. And I realized that I'm not book smart like my Uncle Charles. Or my dad is not book smart like my Uncle Jim. That my daughter is not book smart like the doctor that she was going to marry. But there is an intelligence of the heart that I had a gift to bring empathy to show the fullest extent of what wisdom really is. 
and that my, my daughter as the most loving human being on the planet could demonstrate for my family who had believed their whole life that they were a failure, that there was a greater energy, a greater truth. Love is the answer. Now, what was the disease? What caused the wound? I don't know. How deep is the wound? I don't know. But love is the answer. Yes? In that moment, I realized that I was giving myself exactly what I had always needed. I was giving myself as the father of my own life and my own thinking and my own heart. Because not only did I tell my father good things about him, but for the first time in my life, it was not egotistical to say, let me tell you the lives that I've changed, Dad. Let me tell you about the work that I've done and how I've made a difference as much as Uncle Charles, as much as Uncle Jim. And let me tell you how you changed lives and how my life is forever impacted because you were flawed and because you were beautiful and because you were holy and I know you screwed up. And my father to this day is the first person to say, I could have done better. That feels good. And my father's the first one to say, I didn't know what I was doing. And I'd love to say that my father is the first one to say I love you. He's not, but my mom is. She says it before I say it now. And for my dad to say I love you when I call, it happens. You can tell it's like hard for him to say. <laughs> because that's too vulnerable. And when I say I love my father today more than I've ever loved my father, I do. And what happened in that room with those dialogues is my sister's. You know, if you ever want to clear the Burdick household, all you have to do is talk about three things. Politics, religion, out. See, I have a family of atheists that don't understand what I do. And if you can't understand it, then you can't brace it. You can't even ask a question about it. So it's politics, religion, and emotion. Uh-oh, uh-oh, it's getting too vulnerable. Hey, I think, uh, how about those 49ers? And everybody leaves the room. In that moment, because I put on different glasses, the five steps to enlightenment, nobody left the room. And I saw a family of hungry people who needed to be their own father and create a new reality. And my sisters jumped on board saying, Dad, you're beautiful. You're amazing. You're holy. Well, they didn't say holy. They don't use that word. But they began to say things that had been held back for years and years and years because of their wound. And my brother, who is the most, my twin brother, is the most shut down person on the planet, also jumped in and didn't leave the room. And my mother was in the corner crying. Because my mother then got from my father that which she had not had for 60 years. Nelda, you're beautiful. You're amazing and you're wonderful and you're an incredible wife. And you're there dealing with cancer and I might not have you. And suddenly my father began to realize it because somebody held him in compassionate arms. Somebody shared compassionate ideas with him and held him and wrapped themselves around them even with his flawed mistakes and his screw-ups. And then suddenly love began to grow. And to see my father cry and say to my mother, you're all I have. Be the change you want to see is not just a pretty theory. Be the change you want to see on the planet. Be the change you want to see in your family. Be the change you want to see in the room. Be the change you want to see in your own heart. Take the reins and own your life and be those five steps to enlightenment. And I will sermonize about that. And I will get in your face about that because I know who you are. And I won't let you play small as I will not let my father play small. And I will say I love you every time I get the chance, even when you piss me off. Even when I don't like the way you're showing up, that's what we are called to do. That's rubber meets the road spirituality. And if we cannot do that, why are we sitting here in a unity church? Here's what I know. That kind of love doesn't just fill a room. It fills a heart. His, mine, my sister's, my brother, my mother. My brother, oh my gosh, my brother. And it fills a planet. I'm gonna invite the band to come up. In that moment, 
I freed myself from a prison that I had lived in for a long time. That I gave the key to my father and freed him from a prison and my mother and my sisters and my brother that changed a room, a heart, a family, and an entire dynamic. This Father's Day, I'm asking you to be the father of a new reality. To be the example. To give up judgment and simply be present. Life will call you to be present. Ministers will call you to be present to your stinking thinking. To you defining yourself by a wound. And the spiritual path is absolutely going to call you out. Let go of the wounds. Put on a different pair of glasses. Give up the judgment. We're going to go into meditation. Take a deep breath. Take another one. If you haven't let it go, let it go. Father's Day is a challenge for us to be the father of a new reality and a new paradigm. 